church Sunday because we want we want to have a church. We were praying about it this morning. We want to have another service Sunday, I mean Saturday night, and maybe another one Saturday morning. But like, because some people like to get up early. I know some people that like to go to service eight o'clock in the morning. And and because I, there are some people that like to get up early, and then they like to do their errands after. I, I think we all should take one day off and not do errands. Just relax, spend time with our family, spend time with the Lord, pray together, uh, have communion together. Uh, and then another thing that's so powerful I heard this morning is like sometimes we're not getting a breakthrough on something. And maybe, just maybe, that breakthrough requires something more than just prayer. It might require a fast. And it doesn't have to be, like a lot of people say, it has to be a fast of food. It doesn't have to be a fast of food. It could be sacrifice something that you normally do, like maybe you normally want to watch a, a baseball game or a football game or something. Give that up. Not so much to give it up, but give it up so you can spend more time with God. And they say that's why people should fast. So you, instead of just eating, you just spend time with the Lord alone. And uh, so basically think about that for breakthroughs. So a breakthrough for a job, a breakthrough for healing, um, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Everyone thinks we're fighting, but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Basically, the devil doesn't want you alive. As soon as he finds out you're a Christian, he doesn't want you to do what you're supposed to be doing. Like, like maybe we're supposed to see one other person today to say hi to someone that looks sad in a restaurant. Today. Is everything all right? Who knows? Can I? Or maybe the guy in the corner that looks like he's broke. Why am I? Say, can I buy you a coffee or a donut or oatmeal? Oatmeal. <laughs> Forget the donuts. Yeah. So, donuts are bad. Yeah, we we got to be careful with the with the barbecue too. We got to bring healthy foods because <laughs> we're we're killing our kids with too much sugar. We're giving them all diabetes. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so when the day of evil comes. You may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, and faith, if you want to check out faith, uh, Check out Hebrews 11. It, it mentions all the people in the Bible who had faith. And uh, Sarah and Abraham had faith that they'd have a child of 90 and 100 or something like that. And Moses had faith in it. He gives you all the leaders of the church. So check out Hebrews, Hebrews 11 when you get home. So if you may make a mental note, if you're not writing it down, just see Hebrews 11. How do we remember Hebrews 11? The number 11, that's, that's standard. Number 8 is a new beginning. Number 7 is the number of perfection. Every number has a a, reason, a, a meaning behind it. Like manna has, what was, it, what was manna again? What is it? What is it? <laughs> Not a number, but, but interesting. Uh, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So the the means basically having faith that something's going to work out. When the devil tells you it's not going to work out, that's mean, means what it's mean by the flaming arrow. When the devil tells you not to work, you say, I have faith in God that it's going to work out. And I'll, I'm sure that's some of the things they taught you at Branch Hope, right? Have faith. Take a day at a time. Do not be anxious for the morrow. And, and and repeat it over and over again. Take the helmet of salvation. You're all saved. So you just say to the devil, I'm saved. I know that you think, devil, you're going to get me. But you can't get me. 
Because even if I was killed in, that, uh, in a car crash, guess what? If you know the Lord Jesus, you're going to heaven anyway. You won. Uh, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, so study the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And that's why I'm against a lot of these preachers. There's a lot of preachers out there that say you can't ask God for things. You can't make them a servant. Well, it says in the Bible over and over again. Ask and you shall receive. It says right here. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all the kinds of prayers and requests. Why would he say you're not going to request something bad? You're going to request something good. I'm going to, I'm going to request uh, maybe more income. Think outside the box. Think uh, one of the things that God hit us with this morning. We have to become rich because we can't help poor people if we're not rich. You know, and it doesn't mean you have to have millions. It might mean make an extra ten dollars. You can buy one meal for a person that you never bought before. And you said about Jesus being a servant. Yeah, right. Because he watched the disciples speak, so he was being a servant. Right, absolutely. In fact, one woman, I'll never forget this, this was a very calm woman. I used to work so hard, and I worked 20 hours a day. And she looked me dead in the eye, and she says, she said, Joe, what did Jesus, she didn't say it that easy, she, she said, Joe, what did Jesus come to do? He came to serve you. And we served him too, because we're his hands and feet. And I tell you, if you know someone in prison, make a point to visit him. If you know, a, even if it's a long-distant relative or uh, someone you know from church or even read about in the paper, go visit him. Because uh, you are, you are uh, representing, you're an ambassador. It's a good way to word. You're an ambassador for Jesus. You're called to, to work for him and uh, represent him. Uh, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So that leads into a nice segue, which I didn't plan, but it says, let's pray for all the saints. Let's pray for each other. We come to you, God, Father, to thank you for this morning. We thank you for uh, just, just letting us live one more day. Help us to... Uh, Pray for each other. Pray for the person on your right. Right now. Pray for them. Just pray blessings on them. Pray, pray a longer life. Pray less pain in their life. Pray. Pray that you say a word to them today to make them happier. To cheer them up. We pray, Lord. When we go into the world, we pray, we'll go pray to the person on for the person on your left. If there's no one on your left or right, just pray.